We're gonna go ahead and um, yep, start telling your friends we're on. So we're gonna have a great time. All right, we're gonna have a really, really, really good time this evening, and I believe we're gonna be you know especially blessed. So yep, welcome, welcome, hallelujah, glory to God. So yes, it's the influence. It's the influence of the Spirit. It's the influence of the Holy Ghost, and we're having a Holy Ghost time, 45 minutes that will bless us. You could, I mean, it's the influence of the Spirit. Um, nothing wrong to edify ourselves in the Holy Ghost. Nothing wrong to talk in tongues a little bit. Nothing wrong to speak in tongues for a while. So you could go ahead, you know, do that. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. All right, just let your friends know we're here. Let everybody know it's time to roll, time to be in. And now we're going to have a great, great time talking about the influence of the Spirit because one of the greatest things that could ever impact our lives is the influence of the Holy Ghost. And we're learning much more, you know, this evening. And we're going to be stepping forward week after week, week after week, understanding exactly how to cooperate with the Spirit of God in our lives, you know, learning how to cooperate with the Spirit of God in everything we do, learning how to cooperate, you know, with the Holy Ghost. And that's it because the Holy Spirit is the one, you know, hallelujah. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost is the one who created his world. All right. He's the one that walked with God in the beginning. He's the one that was there all through. So if there's one person, all right, that you and I, all right, could learn from, is there, if there's one person, let me say this, way, please, and you're going to get it. Our journeys from A to Z, all right, our journeys, you and I, all our journeys from A to Z, just basically about the spirit, basically about the spirit. All right, from beginning to the end. So imagine a man living life, all right, without understanding the joy of being led by the Holy Spirit, without understanding that joy, all right, of being filled with the Spirit, without understanding the joy of fulfilling the, the dictates or the plans and the agenda of God for his life through the leading of the Spirit. We would say, oh, but many men have lived life that way. Many men have walked through the earth that way. I agree, all right, but you know, the author of life knows the exact destiny of life. All right. You remember the story, you know, where Jesus was talking about the rich fool. All right. He had expanded and then he said, oh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull down my barn, extend it some more, ready some more, put it up. And Jesus said, hey, come on, you fool. Don't you know, all right, that today your soul will be required. It wasn't because God was saying, hey, I'm against being rich. I mean, God believes in us being rich. And he really, really does. Okay, so but the point there is he didn't have an agenda. He didn't have an idea of the agenda. He, he didn't know. So as far as he was concerned, life was all about amassing, increasing, and expanding. And Jesus said, no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. I mean, men like Abraham were rich men, but men like Abraham fulfilled the purposes of God, all right? The purpose and, well, the connecting other purposes, all right, of God for their lives, all right? You find men, all right? You know, men, you know. Like David, David, Bible said they served God in his own generation. So David fulfilled, fulfilled God's purpose for his own generation. So it's possible, right, to live that spirit life. It's possible to walk with the Holy Ghost. It's possible, right, for you to be full consistently. All right, and something I want to emphasize, you know, as we go on today is perfect timings, perfect events. Perfect timings, perfect events. Perfect timings, yeah perfect event how that it is possible for life to be filled with perfect timings how that it is possible for life to be filled with perfect events oh glory to god father once again we thank you for the opportunity that we have to to share your word to to look into it and to be open to the leadership and the leadings of your spirit in our lives and we thank you because you are the god of perfect timings you are the God of perfect events. And then we're open to it. Thank you for this broadcast is blessed by you. And we enjoy, you know, sweet revelations and sweet impartations across all platforms in the name of Jesus. So, guys, uh, we're, we're going to have that interesting, you know, re readily, readily interesting. And feel free once again to share. All right. This with friends. So they just know, hey, something good. You could be a part of. So I said we're talking about perfect timings and then perfect events. Perfect timings, perfect events. God is a God of perfect timings. Now, in, in the birth of Jesus Christ, you, you could wonder, oh, that there were very many coincidences, all right? So one of it, you'll say, well, how come was at the time that Mary had to give birth to Jesus? 
how come it was at that time right that there was now the decree that was given all right and saying that hey there's going to be a census everybody go back to your own hometown all right so we're going to count you where exactly you came from so mary has to get up with joseph and then go heavy and then travel that way until the event had to fall through the event had to work through such that jesus had to now be born in bethlehem perfect timings perfect event so god has a way of shifting rearranging situations and circumstances and people to meet with the thing that he wants to accomplish that happens all right perfect timings perfect event so we'll see something in the case of peter and acts the 12 you remember peter and acts 12 already has been arrested put in locks okay so they were waiting all right that hey we're gonna kill this guy right after easter i mean they had killed you know the king had had his way you know with james and i was excited and then peter was all locked up bible lets us know that prayer was being made successfully for him by the church an angel walked in and smote peter and said hey get up of course as Peter almost has him deep in sleep. Then Peter gets up, follows through with the angel. And then each season, the stocks, the chains fall off. All right. Doors are opening. Then they get to the very big gate. You remember the story? Bible said the gate opened for them of its own accord. Perfect timing. All right. Perfect timing, of course. Right now you get to the mall and anything swings open. God had done that for Peter already. Didn't you understand that? So perfect timing. It means that as long as I flow the moving of the spirit, now, yes, there might be certain doors that might be open and I need patience. I need wisdom. I have to decipher the mind and the will of God to know exactly what to do. But as long as I follow through with the spirit, no matter how tough things seem, no matter how funny things seem, I will come into that opportunity where I will express perfect timings. These are things that people call coincidences. If we would agree that they are, maybe we need to add the word divine and call them divine coincidences. Because they are not just mere happenings. These are things that are working, 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 and working, bringing to pass the will of God, working, 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 and bringing to pass the mind of God. Oh, that we may basha talabasa, that we may be recipients, you know, of those supernatural coincidences. Hallelujah! Those divine happenings, those those things that happen, you know, and then they they, they just happen to bless us. They happen to you know impact our lives and. And bless us again and again and again and again and again and again and again. All right. And then there's just so much about it. I want to read from Luke, right? Now I'm going to pick it from NLT, all right? So Luke chapter 1, chapter 2, rather. So we find that Jesus was a baby being carried to the temple according to what the law had asked them to do. So Jesus gets to the temple and something really interesting comes up. All right. And Bible says in Luke, all right, chapter 2 from the 25th verse. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. I want you to follow this. Now, the Holy Ghost was upon him, and it had been revealed to Simeon by the Holy Ghost that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now your eyes have seen your salvation, which are prepared before the face of all your people. Listen, it's exciting. So Jesus leaves his home with his parents, a little baby boy, and then they take him up to the temple to be dedicated according to the custom of the law. And at that time, Simeon, the man whom the Holy Ghost are told, listen, you're not going to die, right? You're going to see the anointed one. You're going to see him before you leave this earth. Simeon, whom also the Bible says, had the Spirit of God upon him. Simeon moved into this temple or to the temple at the exact time. I know you might have heard this before. I know you might have preached this before. I know you might know this before. But I want to encourage us. There's such a thing about perfect timings. Perfect timings. Perfect timings. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect timings. Being at the right place at the right time. Being at the right place at the right time. Being at the right place at the right time. Perfect timing is in our lives. Perfect responses to the Holy Ghost. So this is exciting. Simeon had a word from God, but Simeon also was full of the Holy Ghost. So it's one thing to have a word from God, but it's another thing to still be in tune with the Spirit, supernaturally sharp and fine-tuned, such that when it's time for such a word to come to pass, you're in tune. Still in tune. Always in tune. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? Perfect timings. Perfect timings. Perfect timings. Oh, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. So we keep reading. Now we get to the 36th verse now of the same Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, 36. Luke 2, 36. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asa. She was of a great age and had lived a hundred and seven years. I mean, I'd leave the husband rather. I mean, I read husband as hundred. I'd leave the husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow about 84 years who did not depart from the temple? Whoa, but serve God with fastings night and day. She will be sensitive, don't you think so? Fastings night and day. Her focus was the Lord. Her focus was the Lord. Verse 38 says, And coming in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for the redemption in, in Israel. That means, hey, they brought baby Jesus to the temple. Simeon walks in, picks up the baby, and begins to speak. If you were Miriam or Joseph, how do you feel? What would you be thinking? What's going on, my baby? What's happening here? Okay, we know an angel talked to us before now, but this is getting more and more amazing. Perfect timings. Perfect timings. Perfect timings. So Simeon finishes prophesying, Anna walks in. Exact moment. I mean, have you ever gotten somewhere and they say, oh, the person just left? All right? Have you ever been somewhere and they say, oh, the person hasn't come? Too early or too late. But by the moving of the Spirit, we enjoy the perfect timings of God. Oh, hallelujah. Perfect timings of God. Perfect timings of God. Perfect timings of God. Hallelujah. Never too early. Never too late. Always on time. You know, Jesus wasn't born too early. He wasn't born too late. Bible says it was born in due season, due season, due season, in the fullness of time. And that's your story, child of God, the fullness of time. How would it happen? How would you always consistently flow the Holy Ghost with such things by being yielded and sensitive to the leadings of the Spirit? Last week, we looked at John, all right? In John, the third chapter, Jesus makes a very, 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 very beautiful statement in John chapter three, all right? Right. Are you ready with me? Yes, you are. Verse 8. John 3, 8, Jesus said, the wind blows where it wishes. John 3, 8. The wind blows where it wishes. And then you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. The wind blows where it wishes. The wind blows where it wishes. You hear the sound of it. The wind blows where it wishes. You hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from. You cannot tell where it goes. So is everyone born of the Spirit? So there's a blowing of the wind. There's a moving of the wind. There's a blowing of the wind. There's a moving of the wind. I know it's blowing. Where is it coming from? Where is it going? So Jesus says the life of the Spirit cannot be trapped. Please understand this. All right? The life of the Spirit cannot be trapped. The spiritual person cannot be trapped. Oh, because we blow like wind. We blow like wind. Men feel our impact. They feel the effect. They know we breeze past. They know we passed by. How are they coming? How are they going? How's she getting it done? How's he getting it done? We don't know. Oh, we thought they couldn't make it. Oh, we thought it couldn't happen. Oh, but we thought the whole thing was stuck. We thought the project couldn't happen. But these ones refuse to be stranded. These ones refuse to be stuck. The wind blows where it wishes. You hear the sound thereof, but you cannot tell where it comes from. Neither can you tell where it's going to. So is everyone born. And we're born of the Holy Ghost. That means we blow like wind. Hallelujah. We're born of the Holy Ghost. We blow like wind. Perfect timings. We blow like wind. Perfect events. We blow like wind. Being where we ought to be. Be when we ought to be there. Doing the things we ought to do. All right? In your life's agenda. God might have that in so-so XYZ year, XYZ month or 2020. Or oh, you meet with someone. You meet this. This happens to you. Or oh, you might feel right now, but the year seems messed up. No, God's agenda never messed up. Oh, but God's agenda is never messed up. God's agenda is never messed up. Let's read a story in 2 Kings. I think this would interest you. All right, 2 Kings, all right, the eighth chapter, right of 2 Kings. Something rather interesting happens here, you know. Look at 2 Kings chapter 8, all right, and then the first verse. So I'm reading again from the NLT, all right. I mean, New King James. All right, so 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 1. Then Elisha spoke to the woman whose son had been restored to life. Remember the woman, right? saying, Arise and go, you and your household, and stay wherever you can. For the Lord has called for a famine, and furthermore, it would come upon the land for seven years. So Elijah gives this woman a word by the Spirit. There will be famine. The famine will be 
for seven years. So God said there's going to be famine. Also, leave this land. Get away from here seven years. All right? Leave here. Okay. So, verse 2. So the woman arose and did according to the saying of the man of God. And she went to the household and dwelt in the land of the Philistines for seven years. And it came to pass at the end of seven years that the woman returned from the land of the Philistines. And she went to make an appeal to the king for her house and for her land. And then the king talked to Gehazi. Remember the guy? All right, the king talked to Gehazi, servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, please, tell me all the great things Elisha has done. Images. I mean, I've heard so much about the man of God. Talk to me about him. Talk to me. Tell me about him. Now it happened that as, as Gehazi was telling the king how he had raised the little dead, you know, the little boy back to life, that there was the woman whose son was restored to life appealing to the king, all right, for a house and for a land. And Gazi said, my lord, <laughs> oh king, this is the woman, all right? And this is her son who Elisha restored to life. Perfect timing, perfect event. <laughs> the king was asking Elisha to talk about the thing Elijah, Elijah had done. So Elijah was talking, I mean, Gehazi, right? The king was talking to Gehazi, tell me the things Elijah has done. Gehazi was busy telling the story talking about how he had raised a little boy from the dead and the woman walks in with the little boy. How else can this story be perfect? This exciting. As it is exciting. Oh, king, this is the woman and this is on whom Elisha restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she said to him, you know, you know, she told him, so the king appointed a certain officer for her saying, watch this now, restore all that was hers, watch this, and all the proceeds of the field from the day that she left even up until now. Oh my goodness. I mean, all the woman wants is give me my land. <laughs> give me my house. King said, no, we're going to give you your land. They should give you your house, but they should give you every proceed. I mean, take this thing back. Seven years. From the very day she left till now, whatever I think the land might have yielded. I mean, there was farming, but hey, whatever it was you guys made from that land, whatever it was, right? Perfect timing, perfect event leads to restoration. Perfect timing, perfect event leads to restoration. All right? This is beautiful. So there's a leading of the spirit that can lead you to increase. There's a leading of the spirit that can lead you into blessings. Remember what happened in 1 Kings chapter 9? Well, in 1 Kings chapter 9, Saul's daddy, all right, had some asses, and then the asses were lost. And he says, hey, Saul, I need asses, right, to be found. So go look for the asses. So Saul calls a servant, and they say, let's, let's, let's go. Let's go look for daddy's asses. Right, and then they step out looking for daddy's asses. All right, so hey, they couldn't find it. So what do we do? I think it's time for us to get back home. Um, well, the servant said, well, there, there, there's this, there's this here. There's this man of God around here. Um, we could, we could ask him about the asses. Maybe, maybe he'll be of help to us. You know, someone says, um, okay, so first of all, God will have me tell you that the asses you're looking for have been found. Secondly, you're my guest. All right. So you're going to spend the night with me. And then tomorrow I'm going to send you back home to your daddy. All right. So you're going to spend the night with me tomorrow. You go home. Perfect time. You're perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. So God had told Samuel, you're going to meet with the king. And then God had, <laughs> maybe one angel came to the house and he hit those asses, right? And then the, <laughs> the daddy said, for the donkeys. I mean, sometimes when you're sent on a mission, sent on an errand, you might not know whether you're sent on a date with destiny. Oh, glory to God. You know, when you're to say no, too quick to respond, too quick to react, too quick to say how you feel about it, you might miss something you don't know it's going to be. So what if Saul said, no, dad, send somebody else. Send somebody else. I'm, I'm, I'm off duty today. I'm off duty. But Saul said, okay, let's go. I mean, look for asses. Let's go. And they looked and looked and couldn't find them. Looked and looked and couldn't find them. But Saul, while he was busy looking for the asses, the crown of Israel was looking for someone's head. And then they met. Anybody got that now? Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Per oh, glory to God. May our lives be filled with perfect timing. May our lives be filled with perfect events. May our lives be filled. Do you want to pray in the Holy Ghost, somebody? May our lives be filled with perfect timings, perfect timings, and perfect events. Being at the right place at the right time. Being at the right place at the right time. Led by the Spirit. Led by the Spirit. Led by the Spirit. Being at the right place at the right time. Glory to God. Led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Being at the right place at the right time. Being at the right place at the right time, led by the Spirit. 
not led by circumstances, not led by the flesh, not led by reactions, not led by bitterness, not led by anger, not led by grief. Oh, not led by money, not led by mere opportunities or the voices of men, but led by the Spirit. Led, led by the Spirit. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's the influence of the Holy Ghost. So, yeah, you could pray in tongues where you are at any given point in time. Feel free. That's why we're here. All right, to talk about the leadings of the Spirit, to talk about how, you know, the ministry of the Holy Ghost and how we could engage Him more and more and more and more. Glory to God. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. So while Saul was looking for the father's asses, the crown of Israel was looking for the first king. Glory to God. That's exciting. That's exciting. And then they meet. The head meets with the crown. Hallelujah. Samuel sees him and said, huh, uh, this is the guy now. This is him. And Saul doesn't know. Keeps him till the next day. And then, you know, says, this is the Lord's anointed. So we find this perfect timings and perfect events all through scripture. Remember what happens in the book of Genesis. God said to Abraham, pick your son Isaac. Yeah, the one you love, that one, that one, that one. Yeah, pick him up. All right, we need to make a sacrifice. <laughs> all right, anyway, God didn't do all that. But God said to him, listen, I want your son, your only son, the one you will love, Isaac. And I want you to sacrifice him for me on a mountain, a mountain I'm going to tell you off. So Abraham gets up in the morning, saddles it up. You know, and then they move on. Him, Isaac, and then two of the servants. And you get to the foot of the mountain. He tells the servants, you wait here. I am the lad who go up yonder. Please watch this. God had told Abraham, you will take the boy to a particular mountain that I will tell you of. I will tell you what mountain it is. I will show you what it is. I will show you where it is. So Abraham set out not knowing where he was going. All right, so he went out with his kids. So where was he going? Where were they going to go? God said, when you get there, I'll tell you. So what if Abraham had obeyed God about getting Isaac to offer him as a sacrifice? But what if Abraham missed God as to which of the mountains? All right, Abraham just felt, you know, and, and there's some, I, I know who negotiate with God. I know who talk to God. You know, people say, you know, God told me this, but I told him that. And you know, oh, you know, and all that. Um, it's, it's fantastic. I know there's a place for that. I really do. All right, but I would like to just advise, all right, be, be watchful. Be careful about those things you want to negotiate. Remember what happened in the case of Sodom and Gomorrah? Right? So the city was going to be destroyed, and then Lot was told to go to, part, to, go to a particular city. And Lot told him, no, 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 no. There, there's this other place. It's, it's closer. Uh, can we go there? He ended up losing himself, losing his wife, losing his kids, basically. All right? You know, so the angels already would have received an instruction from God and exactly where he needed to go. Go. Just go. <laughs> just go all right nlt in psalm 32 and verse 8 god said i will lead you along the best pathway for your life i will lead you along the best pathway so god knows what the best pathway really really is he says i will lead you along the best pathway he knows what it is anyway you know we might slip into that way. right so oh the the lord now leads abraham and then leads him to a certain mountain so Abraham gets there, you know the story, okay? So lays the lap down, ties him up, and then was about to kill him. And then the angel stops him and says, hey, God has seen your hand and your heart, and I mean your heart and all of that. So he lifts up his head and says, what now? A ram caught in the ticket. So let's assume. Abraham climbs the mountain with Isaac. Ram, now I know angels are just drop the whole thing there, but maybe just makes it a little bit of drama. All right, <laughs> but just illustration. Abraham climbs the mountain. Abraham climbs a mountain. Abraham climbs a mountain. Abraham climbs a mountain. Abraham stops climbing. Abraham stops climbing. Abraham climbs a mountain. Abraham climbs a mountain. So Abraham says, um, Isaac, you know, God told me to do something, so I'm not doing it anymore. Um, I think I should change my mind. I say, well, I don't know that. You know what God told you to do. So, hey, it's all right. So let's go down. So Abraham comes down. Abraham comes down. So Abraham never sees what God has provided. Did you get that? But Abraham keeps going, gets to the top of the mountain. Ram kept on going to, got to the top of the mountain, and then was stuck in the ticket. Like I said, I don't think that happened. Just illustration to be of help, you know, just to help somebody, right? So, so all, all that goes on. So, and just say stop, right? So he stopped, and then he looked, and then saw the ramp. Perfect time, right place, right time, just for the blessing of the time. All right, right place, right time. God told Elijah go to the brook. He went to the brook. He had supply. Ravens fed him 
All right, and then he drank from the brook. And then God told him, all right, brook dried up. God says, go to the village, meet the widow. He gets to the village, meets the widow. So it continues. Perfect timing. Someone says, what's perfect about that? The perfection is the leading of the spirit. If he went to the wrong widow, he would have, yes, got into the city, but was to the wrong widow, so there will be no perfect event. All right? There will be no accuracy in the leading. There will be no accuracy in the direction. Guys, in these stories, we see the leadings of the spirit. We see how that you could be at the right place and then at the right time. And then you see the provision of God. Like the woman in 2 Kings 8, she saw restoration. She didn't just get her land and her house. All right, she got sevenfold everything. I mean, she got harvest of seven years. I mean, backlog of everything she'd ever thought she lost. Everything came. That means God could bring about restoration. We see Simeon, we see Hannah. All right, we see these guys walking in at the right time. Oh, that means someone this season can walk into favor. Oh, glory to God. Right, but these things are not just about money and cars. and and. But I know those things also happen. You could... Some might be thinking right now, I want to sell my car. I want to just sell my car. Or I can just bless somebody with it. And that's exactly when you call just to say, hi, uh, do you need a car? And you say, yeah, okay, take mine and go away with it. And then like, I wasn't even calling for a car. Perfect timing. Perfect event. Perfect timing. Perfect event. Okay. They could have just finished firing some right now. And that's when exactly the person stumbled over your accommodation. I remember the story of Bishop T.D. Jakes, all right? All right, first time he got on TBN, Paul Crouch. All right, the owner of TBN stumbled into his house. All right, his own house. Go back home, you know, from work, you know, and then just, you know, sat on the couch. Why don't you just, you know, just watch something? So he turned on TV, TBN, you know, and then there's this, you know, preacher, Carlton Pearson. All right, he had a slot on TBN, and then he had had this program just concluded. So he caught seven minutes of each preacher, all right, and put it there. You know, in his own, you know, 30 minute slot. So about seven minutes each, making 20, you know, 25, 21 minutes. All right. So each preacher, seven minutes. So Paul Crouch gets home, turns on the TV. It was Paul Crouch's session going on. There was T.D. Jakes's extracted session that was going on. And then Paul Crouch gets blessed and picks up the phone, calls, you know, Carlton Pearson. Who's this person? I mean, and that was how T.D. Jakes got on TVM, if, if I get my story correctly. Man. It's an old story, and I get it correctly. I mean, perfect timing. I mean, T.D. Jakes, I mean, doing woman thou at lose, attendance was not. I mean, nobody knew him, all right? So he's been sweating, preaching, hooping, hollering. So all the, hey, I love this man, and the swag, you know, everything wasn't just all about packaging. I've been doing this thing when nobody knew him. He had been faithful when nobody saw him. But boom, perfect timing. It would look like overnight, but man, that must have been the longest night in history. He was faithful through and through. Whether anybody saw him, whether anybody knew him, whether anybody invited him to meetings. So it was a big break for him. Wonderful testimony. I mean, Carl Pearson, a preaching for him. Done, he's blessed, he's done home. So he might have been done with that presentation. Maybe a few people were there right in front of you. But so from that presentation could just be busy talking about it somewhere else and someone goes, oh, who's that? I think we need someone like that in this next presentation. And then from there, you're told to go to South Africa or you're told you're speaking in Kenya. You know that you can scheme your way up for, but it's just the arrangement of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I just might be that. I know. As the Lord leads you. But I've also seen the beauty. Oh, hallelujah. I'm asking why I share a few personal stories. I've just seen the beauty of those perfect timings. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'll share one. I'll share another. All right, but I've, I've seen those, those, those. Beauty. And imagine now, TDX now comes up there and someone says, oh, oh, how did you know Paul Crouch? I don't. How did you get on TBN? How much are you paying? I was called to be here, baby. You know, come on. God can be good because God is good. But we don't usually allow those leadings of the Spirit, those movements of the Spirit, those, you know, those flows of the Holy Ghost. We want to work things through. But the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Hallelujah. Lead to your own understanding in all your ways, in all, in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he, the Lord, will direct your path. He will. He will. He will. He will, glory to God. He will, he will, he will. Oh, hallelujah. I remember year 2000, you know, the Lord had led me. Well, I, 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 you know, was coming out of school, so the Lord had told me, 
you know, when you're done from school, you're done from the ministry where you had served, you know, and had served both at um, the, one of the branches at Lagos, well, some go out there, and then my school. So, so I, I, I sat back at home one day, it was a Friday, and the Lord said, you okay, so I attended the service of that, you know, young pastor, like three times, all right, midweek service, Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Interesting, he wasn't the one that preached any of those Wednesday services. I'll go, it wasn't him, or we asked shit. I'll go another Wednesday, it wasn't him, or we asked shit. I'll go then, it wasn't one, him, or we asked shit. All right, so that Friday, you know, I was home, and then the Lord said, join me with that friend, you know, where Jason and then he was already a member of this church and he said, Oh, um, his pastor, I'll still mention all of this. All right, or at least pastor in the church. All right, so his pastor was, you know, traveled to Ife, you know, and then we're back, and then he was going back, and then he'll be going with the pastor. So I asked my friend and said, Hey, um, are you still going with Pastor to, to Ife? He said, No, 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 Pastor asked him not to bother anyone. I said, All right. So I walked up to the pastor, all right. So I said, um, so hello, sir, Pastor Lan. All right, so that's Pastor Larry Jewel. So I said, I'll tell the names. All right, so so I walked up to Pastor Larry Jewel and I said, uh, um, so I'm reporting for GT Sound, finally joining church today. Well, I met before that, so I said, I'm finally joining church today. Said, okay, um, the welcome officially, you know, and all of that. Then I said, um, I heard you're going to Ife. He said, yeah, um, would you like to come there space? Great. <laughs> so, smart. <laughs> Went to where I put my bag, my uncle's house, got my stuff, and then, you know, followed him. Then we get to Ife. All right, wanted to quickly have a meal before the meeting. We're eating. All right, so... Pastor Noel walks in, and then Pastor Lan is introducing me and says, hey, um, meet my personal assistant. And then he calls my name. I go, huh? <laughs> when did we discuss that part? All right, and then I let that slide. We got to the meeting where I was going to preach. They had said, you know, I had a period of, you know, maybe coming with him, also being sat on the front row. And then so he was acknowledging people right there. Then he got to me and said from everybody, so I finally reproduced myself. Meet my personal assistant. And then he calls my name. I'm like, Ooh, we didn't discuss this. All right, what's going on? So the next day, all right, second time he said it came out of his mouth, so he knew that was what the Holy Ghost was saying. Now, when God told me on Friday, all right, it's time to join now. God also told me you're going to be close to the pastorate. So based on that preparation, I didn't, I didn't struggle. I said, okay, this will be what the Lord was saying. Okay, so I'm available. So I end up becoming a pastor, but this is it. My life begins to unfold from there. I resume in church office, God I told me also after that, don't get a job anywhere, work there. So I'm at church office, I'm working with him. I become foundation school principal. Um, Dr. K comes to Nigeria, I become Dr. K's PA. By the end of the same year, 2000, I'm ordained the pastor. Whole stretch, one, one, you know, within a year, few months. But this is it. What if that Friday I missed it? What if that Sunday I decided not to even ask him anything about the step to go to Ife? But what, what if I just missed that weekend and say, I'm never going to that church, Lord? I, I see like four weeks more to pray about it. What if? So, what if there was this window? And I've seen those windows in my life. That window just opens and God just puts you through it. It's a window you could say, Lord, no, I don't want to go. <laughs> but perfect timing. I show up. He needed a PA. God sent me at the right time. He picked me at the right time, and the rest of my life goes this way. In ministry. Ooh. What do you do? All right, so I found an old story to tell you. I'm saying all this because it's important that you and I come to embrace the leadings of the Spirit. Perfect timings. Perfect timings. As we go on, yes, as, as, um, as I, I feel I should, I'll tell us one, you know, tale after the other. Just to confirm that it's the life of the Spirit. Pray in tongues a little bit, please. Go, Rita, God. Thank you, Lord, that we are led, that we are sensitive, that our hearts, our hearts are pliable, our hearts are pliable, pliable, open to the leadership and the leadings of the Spirit, open, open, open to the leadership and the leadings of the Spirit, open, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, open, hallelujah, to the leadership, open to the leadership and to the leadings of the Spirit. Open glory to God, amen. All right, I, I want us to read Psalm 32. I've mentioned it earlier, so we're going to look at it. Psalm 32 and the eighth verse, Psalm 32, verse 8. All right, so Psalm 32 and then the eighth verse. I know you might know it, but it's good to read it together. All right, so from Psalm 32 and then verse 8. Are you ready? Okay, so Psalm 32, verse 8. I will instruct you 
and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. I will instruct you and I will teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Verse 9 says, do not be like the horse or like the mule, which has no understanding, all right, which must be harnessed with a bit and brittle, else they will not come to you. Do not be, do not be like the horse or the mule. English, don't be stubborn. <laughs> don't be stubborn. Don't be stubborn. Be pliable. Be open. Be sensitive. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Be pliable. Be open. Be open. It's not always a voice you might hear. It's not always a voice you might hear. It could be just one gentle leading of the Spirit. Gentle leading of the Spirit. It could be a thought the Lord drops. All right? It could be that your heart was excited about something. And suddenly your heart is no longer excited about it. Check the thing out. Maybe the Lord is saying, mm -mm, I've withdrawn from that thing. Don't get yourself involved in it. Oh, you're excited. Oh, you're going to see XYZ. Oh, you're traveling to XYZ place tomorrow. Oh, you're doing XYZ stuff and all of that. And then there's that. Mm, I don't feel like going anymore. Mm, don't, don't, don't be stubborn. Check it. Check it. Thank you, Lord. Check it. Please, check. Don't be stubborn. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. NLT. All right, same, same. Psalm 32, verse 8. All right, NLT. I, I, I like the way the NLT puts it. All right, so the NLT says, I will guide you. Thus says the Lord, NLT. I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you. I will watch over you. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. I'll read nine and then come back to eight. Nine, well, sounds a bit harsh, but let's, let's read it. It says, do not be like a senseless horse or mule that needs a bit and a bridle to keep it under control. You don't, you, you, you don't have to be, ah, uh, no, make it easy. Make it smooth for the Holy Ghost to roll with you. Make it smooth. When you're not clear, you're not clear. It's all right. But don't don't stay up not being clear and eh, I'm not clear. You know, fine tune. Change your environment. Change atmosphere. More importantly, you may be in the same place you've always been. We just need to create a bit more worship, a bit more prayer, a bit more praying tongues, a bit more. Make it a bit more. Get quiet a little more. All right. Do whatever you need to do, but don't be like the horse. Don't, don't, don't. All right, allow my Yoruba. Don't, don't use a giddy. <laughs> don't make it easy. Make it easy. And there are things we're learning, all right? We're flowing with the Holy Ghost this series. We can't teach everything one Sunday, all right? So we're learning this. All right, it says, Thus saith the Lord, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and I will watch over you. I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. It means there are a few pathways that look good. There could be many pathways that look great. God says, I will guide you along the best. I will guide you along the best. I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you. I will watch over you. I will. I will. Isn't it exciting? Isn't it wonderful to know that we can be led? Isn't it exciting, wonderful to know we can be guided? Isn't it exciting to know, oh, glory to God, that we are led by the Spirit? That we are led by the Spirit? That we are led? Don't be like King Saul. Don't, don't, don't honor the voice of the people more than the voice of the Spirit. Don't honor the opinions of people. Don't fear men. Don't fear men. Don't fear man. If you want to walk with God the way you should, all right, I don't mean walking with yourself and then your full head knowledge and all of those kind of stuff. No, 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 no. No, no, I'm saying you flow with the Holy Ghost. If you want to walk with him like you should, you would sometimes be misunderstood, all right? You'll sometimes feel like you're alone. 
you sometimes, you know, go on a long journey because you're being led by the Spirit. You're being led by the Spirit. You're being led. Everybody won't, you know, so if you're trying to make everybody understand you, you're going to go on a long journey. I mean, you would, you, you might end up, allow me, please, all right? You might end up like Moses and the guys in the wilderness because, I mean, that was a mixed multitude, so it became a long journey, all right? So you're just taking yourself on a very, very, very long journey. All right, remember when God told Abraham to get out of his country, all right, his kindred, you know the next one? Father's house, all right? So God said, leave your country, leave your kindred, leave your daddy's house. And then Abraham left with Sarah, and then he left with one more person from daddy's house, Lot. All right, so that was in the plan. That was in the package. All right, so God will bless Lot because Lot is with Abraham. God tells that leave your country, leave your kindred, leave your daddy's house. Anybody in your papa's house, don't carry. All right, and then it was after Lot left Abraham in Genesis 13 that God said, okay, now can we talk, bro? Okay, so lift up your eyes to the north, to the south, the east, the west. Whatever you see, then I'm going to give to you. God was talking to Abraham, man, no, man, no. This is me and you now, bro. It's all me and you that were to have this conversation from the beginning. Then we create intimate. And then you say, oh, but, but, but if I leave now, what would it look like? Oh, so what will happen? So what, what, what's going to go on? Oh, so what would the people say? Oh, so how's it going to be now? No, look like, oh, so what will happen? So what, what, what's going to go on? Oh, so what would the people say? Oh, so how's it going to be? be now no if the lord is leading you follow the holy spirit follow the holy spirit if the lord is leading you follow the holy spirit follow the holy ghost you might not be understood and that's fine later everybody will understand you glory to god glory to god i believe you have been blessed all right today we got a round up right now all right you could drop your comments you could send in questions you could, send me, um, you could leave comments and questions on youtube those of you watching on YouTube, you can leave comments or DM or right, on Instagram. And then please, those of you listening via audio or Spreaker, uh, you could drop uh, comments or questions right there. So I'll, I'll, I'll get back to every one of them. But this is every Sunday, 5 p.m., all right, West African time, all right, 5 o'clock to 5.45, 45 minutes talking about the influence of the Holy Ghost. Oh, I believe you have been blessed. Oh, glory, glory. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Father. Oh, that our days and our weeks and our months and our years are filled with the influence of the Spirit. Oh, that our lives are characterized by supernatural coincidences. Oh, that we enjoy perfect timings, perfect timings and perfect events. Well, where we ought to be, when we ought to be there doing the things we ought to be doing and enjoying the results we ought to enjoy. Glory to God. Our lives are characterized by the leadings of the Spirit. Our lives are filled with supernatural adventures. Our lives are filled with divine coincidences. We enjoy the blessings and the leadings of the Spirit. We're filled with this. Oh, we enjoy the fruit of it. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. So join me every Sunday. My pleasure to teach you this again and again. And please, on Spotify, on Google Podcasts, on Spreaker, and if you other podcast platforms, Nigerian Times, 7 a.m., Mondays through Friday, I teach for about 30, 30 minutes. It's called the Money Fake Ghost. It will be a huge, huge blessing all right, to you. Thank you for allowing me have you with me this Sunday evening. I believe you've been greatly blessed. Keep living all right, a spirit-assisted life. Keep living all right, in that supernatural. Keep living all right, in that atmosphere all right, of perfect timings and perfect events. I'll see you again next Sunday. Thank you. Love you. And goodbye. All right.